Now then, what we want to take a little bit more time looking at is this file called boot ini. Best way for us to do this is just to have a quick look at it on our machines. So what I want you to do, those of you watching Smart Lab, make sure you take, take, uh, follow me along with this exercise as well. I'm obviously broadcasting my screen to everyone in the room, so they're going to see my boot ini file. Let me show you it. If we go to our start button, over to my computer, and then open up our C drive, you'll see in here we've got this file called boot.ini. Obviously this file is only being displayed if I'm doing what? Showing hidden. hidden files and folders. Good, if I'm showing my hidden files and folders. So if you've not completed all the previous exercises, you need to now go and make sure you show your hidden files and folders. Quick reminder for those people who have not set this up yet, how do I show my hidden files and folders? Start menu. You do it in the Windows. I can do Explorer. it from here though, I can do it directly from this screen I'm in, can't I? Tools, Tools menu. Tools menu. Folder, Folder options. options. Folder options. View, view tab. Top. View. And then it's all in there. So those of people watching on SmartLed, if you've not set your um, hidden files yet, you need to set this up so that you can actually see boot.ini. Well, once you get to see boot.ini, great, just double click it, and it opens up and you'll see it's a text file. Now I'm just going to put a space in here just so you can see that there are two separate sections to this file. There's a section up here called bootloader, and then there's a various loads of information here. You've got a section down here which says operating systems, and you've got a load of information across here. First thing I want to emphasize here, bootini is a very complex looking file. However, fundamentally, the whole concept behind it is very straightforward. Let's take a look at some of these sections. Timeout equals 30. Anybody want to hazard a guess as to what that could mean? It's a countdown. A countdown. 30 seconds. So if I change that to 10, what's going to happen now? It'll count down from 10. It's going to count down from 10 seconds. Pretty straightforward that, isn't it? Default. Now forget this for a second, but what does the word default imply? Reverts back to. Yeah, it reverts back to, or that's the one it chooses. So, do you think, well, first of all, which operating system do you think will load if I let the counter go right down to zero? WinXP. WinXP. Win we can see that we've got the WinXP folder sitting over here. As I say, ignore this for a second. We're going to come to that in a second. It's something called an arc path. Down the bottom here, we've got operating systems. And this is giving us a listing of our operating systems on our computer. Pretty straightforward stuff. Forget the top line. Look at the bottom line. C colon backslash equals Microsoft Windows. What do you think that refers to? Windows 98. Windows 98. We see here we've got two speech marks. In between those speech marks it says the words Microsoft.Windows. What do you think that means? Write the text. Say again? Write the text. On Write the, the text. So if I change this to what Microsoft Windows 98, what do you think will appear now when I boot my machine up? Microsoft Windows 98. Microsoft Windows 98. If I change this to Dave's old cool 98 system, what do you think will appear when I boot up? Dave's old yeah. cool 98 system. Yeah, it's just a text file. You can change it. Obviously, the key thing is to make sure you change what's inside those speech marks. Those of you watching SmartLearn, there's a very detailed task to actually do this in a second. So just watch for now, and then in a second when I get you to go and do the task, then follow through that very methodically. One thing we've got to be very careful of here is when does this file load? Think back to what we were talking a second ago. When does this file load? After NT loader. After NT LDR. So would you say it's fair to say would is it fair to say it's right at the beginning of the boot process? Yes. So if you mess around with this thing, do you think it could cause some problems with your system booting? Oh, yeah. Very much so. So as I say, those of you watching Smile, be careful. Just watch for a second. Now then, we've got the little word there saying what appears in our boot menu. But what do you think this is referring to? Refers where to boot from for that operating system. Perfect answer. It refers where to boot from for that particular operating system. Let's think about those words. It refers where to boot from for that particular operating system. Okay, same question. What do you think that refers to? Same thing. Same answer. Where to boot from for that particular operating system. Is it fair to say though it's written slightly differently? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The concept is very straightforward though. See that there? C colon? That is the exact equivalent of saying that. Multi zero, disk zero, R disk zero, partition two is just the same as saying C colon. It may not appear that way at this very moment in time, but it is exactly the same. It's just the way it does it is slightly different. Let me give you a very simple breakdown of this. This system is telling the computer where the operating system files are. It's saying for Microsoft Windows 98, they're on the C drive. 
for Windows XP, they're in multi zero, dis zero, rd zero, partition two. This is the same as me saying this. Michael, do me a favour. Go to T9 and pick up those folders for me, please. Where's T9? Good. First question you need to ask. That's like me saying C drive. The computer doesn't know where the C drive is. It has to be told where the C drive is. It's a variable. You with me? So every time we put C drive, it's nice and handy for us, but it's useless for the computer, because every time I say C drive, it goes, oh, God, where's the C drive? Where's the C drive again? Oh, it's that dear. Oh, okay, then. Just like Michael did. When I said T9, he said, well, where's T9? I have to give him further instructions to find T9. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. NT doesn't do that. What NT does is it doesn't use these names. Obviously, it uses those names in my computer. It says, all right, you want to call it C drive? Yeah, okay, it's C drive. I know what it is. You know what I mean? In the, in the, back, in the background, Windows is not saying C drive. Windows is saying multi-zero, disk zero, R disk zero, partition two. That's what it's saying in the background. So for him, it's a lot quicker. Michael, same thing, but I'm now going to give it to you in the arc path format. Go out the door, down the corridor, second door on the right, first desk, there's a load of folders. Can you bring them here for me? Be one minute. Does he need any additional instructions? Nope. So, think about this. Which is quicker for Michael to do? For me to just tell him T9, and then he's got to find out for himself where T9 is, or for me to just tell him straight away where T9 is? Give him directions. Give him, yeah, just tell him straight away. It's a little bit more complex to type. Would you agree? Yeah. There's a whole load more information in there. But fundamentally, once you've done it, it's done. And thankfully, NT, uh, N all of the NT-based operating systems do this stuff completely automatically when you install them. Have we set this thing up? No. no. This was just here, wasn't it? We've not done anything. It was just here, and it was working. It's called an arc path. Let's take a look at the arc path in a lot more detail. I'm actually going to copy this direct arc path out. So let's do it. 